Welcome back to the channel. Today's question is all about the love of math. Taking a question that has a bunch of different kind of mathematics all in one. So let's take a look at it. This is what it is. So what we're going to do is use induction, proof by induction, to show that this is equivalent to that for all integers, all values of n that are integers. So I'm going to use induction to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show that it's true for n is equal to 1. Now for the purpose of the video, I'm just going to do it by inspection. So if n is 1, n is 1, 1, 1, 1, we're going to show that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Check with your teacher or your professor before you just sort of say tr it's true for n is equal to 1 by inspection because they may actually want you to write that out. So just make sure, okay? The second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make an assumption. Since I can show that this is true for some arbitrary small values of n using some matrix algebra, then I'm just going to say, okay, well, it's true for some arbitrary integer. So I'm going to say it's true for n is equal to k. And that's by assumption. Okay, so I'm assuming that it's true. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that if I take the k and I put it where the n is, this is what I get. Okay, so if we're assuming that the statement is true for n is equal to k, then this is naturally true. And we come back to that in the next step, okay? We can use any assumed um, information in our induction step, which is our next step. So the third step is really where we get the juice. This is the induction step. Induction. Now listen to what this is saying. This is saying that we want to show that the statement is true for n is equal to k plus 1 whenever it's true for n is equal to k. Okay, don't miss the, the power of this. This is like the domino effect. It's saying that if, it's, if we can show that it's true for 7 whenever it's true for 6, well then that goes 8 when it's 7 and 9 when it's 8 and it just goes right to the end of the numbers. So this is the power of the proof by induction. So what I want to show is this. So that's what I want to show. I want to show that the left-hand side can be made equal to this right-hand side. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the left-hand side and do some mathematics on it and show that this is true. So I usually say to students, show write, write down what you want to show is true and then go for it. Take one side and do some math to show that it actually is equal to this. So watch what I can do. I can take the left-hand side, I'm going to write it like this. So all I did was I took the left-hand side and I wrote it like this, just using some basic exponent rules. Okay, well now look, this can be substituted using my assumption. So the assumption is that this is equal to that. So I could sub out this for the right-hand side up there. So let me try to do that. All right, so this is true naturally. We put the substitution in. And what I could do is I could take this matrix and multiply it by that, just using some basic math. So here we go. In order to do the matrix multiplication, I take the first row and multiply it by the first column. So cos theta times cos k theta plus this times this. So I'm going to pick up a negative there. So I'm going to take the first row, second column, and I'll continue. I'll get the lower left element, so I'll multiply the second row by the first column. And then finally, I'm going to multiply the second row by the second column. All right, so that's where we are. Well, now take a look at this. These are some basic trigonometric identities. So if you look at this first element here, that's cos, cos, sine, sine with a minus in the middle. That's your cosine addition identity. 
Remember with cosine, the sines disagree, so if it's negative here, it's positive there. So that's theta plus k theta. We'll look at this one. That's sine, cos, cosine. So that's your sine addition identity, theta plus k theta. Come on over here. Well, I've got a negative and a negative. I'm going to take that out, and that's going to leave inside my sine, cos, cosine. So that's my sine theta plus k theta. And then finally, cos, cos, sine, sine is going to be my cosine theta plus k theta. And I think we've almost done it here. Because now, look, I can factor a theta out of each of these expressions. So finally, this is going to be equal to cosine. I'll take the theta out, which leaves 1 plus k theta. And down here, I'm going to take the theta out. So that's going to leave a sine um, 1 plus k theta. And then here, I've got a negative sine. Take the theta out. So 1 plus k theta. And then finally, cosine 1 plus k theta. And I'll put my matrix brackets around that. And in fact, that's what I wanted to show. You can see here, the goal was to show that these are equivalent. Now, I say k plus 1 and 1 plus k, but that's not a meaningful difference. So you can see, just by using some basic matrix algebra, that we were able to prove this. And I'm going to put a little box there. Or you can say q, qed, since you did a proof here. All right, so using a simple proof by induction, the three steps, as well as some basic matrix algebra and identifying some trig identities, I was able to get my proof. Anyway, if you like this video, please slap a like on it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you right back here in the next video.